um, but it was, and then we started like, it was hard at first because people were very intimidated to talk to us, uh, especially being from America, it's very like, whoa, uh, but they were, it, we couldn't, it was hard at first, but we started with the kids, uh, Neely and Ellie, we would learn just a few phrases, I guess, and we were, we learned how to ask them their names, how old they are, um, and that kind of stuff, and then it started to like, we started, the kids started to like open up to us, and then through the Bible studies, it just started with like five kids, and then it went from like five kids to ten kids to ten kids to fifteen, and then now usually we have like twenty kids at our Bible study every Saturday. Um, and then yeah, but also when I'm doing the ministries in the in the areas that those kids are, they literally just live in shacks. And like my mom said, the the dirt outside is the same as it is on the inside. So. Uh, there's a lot of sicknesses too. We had one girl, she was sick every week. She got bit by a dog and was in the hospital. Uh, and then also it can be dangerous sometimes because we have alleyways in the Philippines where uh, it just goes down, like almost looks like it's going down forever. Um, but it can be dangerous down there. I actually got chased by a guy with a machete in the alleyways um, one time. Uh, just if we have Bible checks, and obviously we can like it, so when we and uh, my partner, who uh, was a little boy from our church, his name was Ethan, uh, but we gave the guy a track, he didn't seem to like it very much, but we started walking back, and then we heard someone yell, like, run in the dialogue, and when we looked back, and there's this, that same guy, he's, like, holding a machete and then chasing us up the alleyway, uh, but then a guy that we did give a track to, he stepped in front of the guy, and he was like, run, 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 so we ran to the top of the alleyway, and then, uh, well, he was still chasing us, of course, but that guy that we gave a check to, that said thank you, he jumped in the in front of the guy with the machete, and oh. like, I don't know, just like, <laughs> just, I don't know the words, uh, but like, it was sometimes to run, I guess, but yeah, it's hard, and it was scary for me, at first, after that next Saturday, I didn't want to go back. Because I was like, oh man, I'm like, come on. I don't want to go back to the same place that I got chased with a guy in Machete. I don't what? know. But, um, but then uh, uh, my mom used to tell me uh, that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us his power and a sound mind. And that really helped me because I was really shaken after. Uh, that and I really didn't want to go back. Like I actually feel like, oh, like please don't take me back there. But then uh, through that like phrase, it really helped me to like be strong, Lord. Do not fear. And like do not fear is mentioned so many times throughout the Bible, and uh, it really helped me with that. And I'm glad that I did go back because now our Bible study is just exploding with kids everywhere. Uh, but yeah, I really love our ministry in the Philippines, and I would enjoy it for anything. Hey, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power of love. And I like it. It's a good word. Y'all need to memorize that. Y'all need to memorize that. What do you think? It's a good one. I didn't get that again. Amen. All right, that's right here. Expect here next week, Jim. Okay. Well, we are happy. Happy. We are. We feel right at home. It's good to be back in the states. The fellowship. The I don't know. The, just the fellowship you can have with brothers and sisters in Christ. There's nothing like it, especially in the culture that you grew up in. It's just so nice. I could we could just stay, and the food is great. I thank you so much, Jerry. Good not thank you enough. And we're excited about the days ahead. God is. Uh, we'll share some of our plans, what we think God wants us to do. Um, we do want to start a church in the island of Mindoro. Um, in the Philippines, they have what are called barangays. And you have a city, and then every city has maybe 10 uh, barangays. And there's a couple that we uh, are looking at right now, and other pastors have told us about. There's no works there. 
And um, the one pastor said, Tom, that's the, that's the Sodom and Gomorrah of this island. It's uh, a place where traffic children go to. It's a destination. And a lot of foreigners coming in. It's, it's a dark place. Uh, it, it's an island that has uh, it's steeped in animism. So the spirit, it's, it's just a dark place. Uh, when people are sick, they go to the witch doctor. And it's just... Uh, they need they need something and they need the gospel. And, That's right. And we're excited. You know, we don't have like the missionary pedigree. We're not uh, our parents are not missionaries, uh, but we have the gospel, and we really have all we need because uh, that can change the hearts yeah. and lives. And we've seen that all already. Right. Just being there, um, that's where our confidence is. Um, but we love being in the Philippines, and the girls uh, they are doing a good job. They're uh, they're there with us. I know there's some Saturday mornings when they just want just to sleep in, uh, but that's our ministry time, and we go out, and sometimes when it rains, we go into the uh, uh, the squatter areas, and it gets so muddy. It gets so muddy, and we have to walk, and uh, they just go, and they have good attitudes, and they're always glad after that we went, but um, it, it is a great joy, and Oftentimes we'll think in our lives, oh, I remember the good old days. I talked with my wife and I, oh, these are the good old days. Hey, right Amen. now, we uh, no, uh, we treasure these times every day, every place. We travel to the ARB. Um, God has just been good to us. Um, you don't have to feel sorry or pity for missionaries. Um, we love what we do. What a joy to do this full time. That's what we get to do. Uh, to, to try to bring the gospel to people that have never heard before. Uh, that is, to us, that is just a life worth living. We, we love it. And I uh, just want to share a few things with you uh, this evening when we'll be done. I know we just ate, uh, so we're getting tired. That's <laughs> all. So, uh, just a few points here, and then we'll go. Um, a missionary, what is the purpose for a missionary? Well, a missionary is a, is a messenger. They're messengers <clears throat> of the gospel. We look at the Great Commission, go ye uh, to all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. And then we see also the Bible says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And, um, and what was Jesus doing? Well, Jesus was showing us by example that he was looking for uh, disciples. That's what uh, Jesus was doing. We look at Mark chapter number one, when Jesus first starts calling the disciples, um, he calls uh, Simon and Andrew, and we'll, we'll look down at verse number uh, 16, we'll get there. Uh, but I started studying this out, Lord, um, we're missionaries, and, and like you, we, you went and you uh, made disciples, and that's what you want us to do. But to, to, to call disciples first, you have to know what a disciple is. And uh, th this message has been convicting to me, and it's really a message uh, aimed at me. Uh, God has said, Tom, I need you to be my disciple. I need you to be a follower of Jesus first. And so when I looked at this, well, what does it mean? I tried to put myself in the shoes of Peter. What did he have to do? Um, what, what did God have him do? And we see here uh, a couple different types of followers of Jesus in the Bible. And, yeah. I, I want to look at, we'll look at Mark 1, and then I want to contrast that with the other type of follower of Jesus. Uh, in John 6, 24, and in the Philippines, we have seen these two types of followers. And so, I guess my challenge this evening would be, what kind of follower are you? What kind of followers are we? Are we following Jesus like we should? And I think we can all admit, maybe we should be following him a little bit closer. And how do we, how do, we do that? Um, firstly, I want to look this evening at the fleeting followers. Fleeting followers. John 6, uh, 24. We have the story of the, the feeding of the 5,000. After this time, we have, uh, uh, we have these people. Now Jesus, he's getting very popular. Everyone knows who he is. He's done these great miracles. He's multiplied the fish and the bread. Verse number 24. When the people, when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. 
seeking him. They were seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side, they said, Rabbi, when, when camest thou hither? So they had just seen this miracle, the feeding of the 5,000, and something intrigued them about that. And uh, most people in our world, especially in the Philippines, they know who Jesus is. They know who he is. And we've tried to get people to follow Jesus. And uh, they fall into one of two categories. Here we have the fleeting followers. And I'll talk about what, what that looks like. And Jesus, he's going to answer them. All these people that have come over, the Bible doesn't say how many people have come from that feeding, maybe hundreds, thousands, I don't know. Uh, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Jesus looked at their hearts. Why are these people following me? What do they want? Are they true followers or are they fleeting followers? And I've seen in the Philippines, we call them uh, Pastor Vice Christians. Those who would come to church because maybe there's some free food. Uh, there are many churches in the Philippines that give out rice. And maybe they go to a church one Sunday and they give me uh, one kilo of rice. But this church over here will give us two kilos of rice. So we'll go there instead. Um, but they go to church. They follow Jesus for what they can get from him. We have in verse number 26, Jesus tells them. He sees right at their hearts. He says, uh, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Jesus was saying, you're following me uh, because of what you can get. They remembered Moses in the Old Testament. Moses Remember the, the manna in the wilderness, and they thought, well, a prophet, that's what prophets do, and they wanted those loaves from Jesus. My question for us, what do we want from Jesus? Yeah. Right. Well, what are we looking for from him? There's a, a generation today that they bounce around from one church to the next, and well, I'll go to that church if I get this kind of experience, if they have this kind of ministry, I'll go to them. But Jesus here is looking for a faithful follower. We see in John 6, as we continue down, what happens with all these people. We know Jesus had his 12 disciples, one left him. But the truth is, there were more disciples. There were more disciples, but some of them left. If we look at verse 66, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? And we have here the, the fleeting followers. These people all left Jesus. When they didn't get what they wanted from Jesus, they left him. And we have people like that. They're faithful for a little bit. If things are going good, if, if the miracles are happening in my life, if my prayers are getting answered exactly the way I want, if I get what I want from Jesus, I'll follow him. That sounds good. We'll uh, have Jesus in our lives. Um, but when they don't get what they want, they, they flee from him. We would call them rice Christians in the Philippines. And then we want to contrast that with the faithful followers. And this is what we need to be. We look here at the calling of the disciples in Mark chapter 1, verse number uh, 18. Uh, let's go to uh, verse 17. Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Well, let's go to verse 16. Sorry. Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew and his brother casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. See, firstly, that the followers of Jesus were just normal people. Yeah. Just normal people. You know, the, the greatest encouragements to us on the, the mission field, that when we'll have a visitor come, we have uh, a group come from Kansas. Uh, there's... A couple of guys there, they uh, they put horseshoes on the horses. I don't know what they call them, uh, but just big, strong guys. Never been in ministry, just saved recently. But they wanted to, they want to follow Jesus. They just want to follow him. You know, when they come to the Philippines, people want to, to, to come around them. What are these guys with their cowboy boots and their cowboy hats? What are they doing? They're they're greatly used, and they've been a great encouragement to us. You don't have to have some special uh, 
pedigree to, to be used by God to be a follower of Jesus. Hey. These were regular people. True. You know, my wife and I, sometimes we feel like out of place when we first got into ministry. We're, we just have regular jobs. We're just regular, we're regular people. We're ordinary people. Lord, would you, can we follow you? We call regular people. We call regular people. In verse 18, verse 18 it says, And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. I see firstly here there's a commitment to follow Jesus by faith. Mm -hmm. To be a faithful follower of Jesus, there must be a commitment to follow him right. by faith. Uh, Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Uh, we come to church uh, so that our faith can grow. Uh, right. We can't get faith apart from God's word. We must take hold of the, the promises of God's word yeah. and, and follow him and go after him. And that's what the disciples did. They heard. They heard Jesus. Come after me. Come after me. And I will make you fishers of men. They had to follow him by faith. And they probably at that time didn't know what that meant. What does yeah. it mean to be a fisher of men? I, I fish for fish. But it was an act of faith. They had to follow Jesus yes. by faith. Um, uh, we were in Arkansas just recently. My uncle is a pastor out there. And uh, my uncle has had five different heart attacks, not in great health. And he said, Tom, would you help me? I have a tree to plant. Uh, it's in the backyard. It's a little cherry tree. And I said, sure, I'll come and help you. And I didn't realize that if you were planting a tree in the Ozarks, there is something else in the ground other than dirt. Uh, there are rocks. And I got that shovel in there. And I worked for about an hour. And I got about that much of dirt removed. And he said, OK, we're going to have to take it up to the next level. We're going to have to remove some things. And so he gave me the big pitch fork uh, with a sledgehammer on one end. That thing was heavy. And maybe I'm just out of shape. That's probably more of it. But I had lifted that thing up. And I hit those rocks. And I had to remove some things. And I we put that cherry tree in there. And it wasn't quite deep enough. So I had to go a little further. And we had to dig a little bit deeper. Uh, to get that thing to take root, we had to remove some things. And you know what? We come to church uh, every week. And pastor, he gives the word of God. And we hear it. There's no lack of the word of God being preached uh, but sometimes it falls on our hearts and there's other things occupying our heart and uh, the pastor was saying God cannot uh, you cannot have one thing two things in the same place at once something like that um, there's some there's some things that need to be removed the disciples were called and they were fishermen they forsook that, that life. We see here as we as we go down verse 19, we have the calling of the next two disciples. Um, and when they had gone a little further, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who were also uh, mending their nets. And straightway he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. Uh, so we see here that the first two disciples they left their, their occupation. I'm not telling you this this evening to leave your job uh, you have to leave your job to follow Jesus I'm not saying that and uh, then we see the next two disciples they left their father and the servants there I'm not telling you you, you need to leave your your family in that okay but uh, I can't get away from the fact that to follow Jesus there's something that has to be left behind it, it's not free we, we tell the Filipinos uh, our salvation is free praise the Lord Follow Jesus will cost us something. Right. It's just, it's it's not free. I looked at this from every angle, and I, I want to, uh, as I'm going through this, I'm getting more and more convicted. These are men that, they left something. Yeah. They had to give something up. Well, it was not free. We see here next that there is a commitment of self-denial. How many of you, at the beginning of the year, we have a New Year's resolution? Uh, maybe it's the lose weight to get in shape, whatever it is. And we have this, uh, we have good intentions. Sometimes even as Christians, we, we have to put goals in our, our minds. And, but sometimes we're lacking the commitment. We lack the commitment. And here uh, we see that to follow Jesus, there's a commitment to follow, follow Jesus by faith. And then secondly, a commitment of self-denial. They had to deny themselves some things. Luke 6.23 says, And he said to them all, 
if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Deny himself. Wow. I don't like to deny myself things. I don't like to deny myself food. When I got the, when I saw those Keebler cookies downstairs, that I haven't had in three years, I could not deny. I, it is what it is. And I'm going to eat some later. I don't like to deny my flesh. Okay? We don't like that as humans. To follow Jesus, there's some, some denial, some self-denial needed. Let me ask you this question. Is there anything in your life that you would forsake to follow Jesus is there anything? Uh, for most of us, I think that is time. That is time. Could we forsake some time? Could we give Jesus a little more time every day? Maybe pray a little longer. Maybe read our Bible a little longer. What would we forsake to follow Jesus closer? We see that's the a commitment of time with Jesus. John 12, 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there also my servant be. There shall also my servant be. I see here in the first chapter of Mark, what did the disciples do? These new followers of Jesus, they were just with him. They were with him. You know what they saw? They saw Jesus going into the temple and casting out demons. Right. They saw Jesus go to Peter's house and he uh, uh, healed his mother, his mother-in-law, I should say. And up here, he was a good man. Asking for Jesus to heal his mother-in-law, that's a good thing. Right, and, yeah. uh, a good man. Uh, yeah, right. So we have... Uh, but the disciples, they were, they were doing these things. They were with Jesus, and they were witnessing his power. If we want to see Jesus do things in our lives, it's, it's not because of our gifts or our abilities. It's because we've been with him. When, we're, when we walk closer with Jesus, we'll start to see him working in our lives. See, lastly, there's a commitment, the commitment to a new identity. They were fishermen, and Jesus said, I will make you to be fishers of men. And in Asian culture, it's important what job you have. It's, in, it's important uh, your, your status amongst your peers. Uh, you want to be a doctor or an engineer. That looks good. Um, but we see here, they got a new identity. And the Bible says in Psalm uh, chapter number 23 uh, that we are like sheep. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, as a sheep, you just follow the shepherd. That is the new identity. As a follower of Christ, we are sheep. Right. We are sheep, and we trust and we follow the shepherd. He's going to lead us through things. And I'm not going to pretend that there hasn't been uh, hard times on the mission field. There has been some challenges, uh, but, but God has been good. God has been faithful. The, the prayers of your church and other churches has uplifted us. We have felt it. I remember one particular day, uh, my wife knows what I'm talking about. Um, I had to do something that I did not want to do. Uh, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me for over a year. I knew uh, that I had to do this thing, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to. And um, But I remember going and doing this thing such peace come over me. Um, the joy of the Lord is our strength. I had that joy come up and I knew that God was right there with yeah. me. And God helped me get through that. And he answered that prayer. Um, but following Jesus, know this, that there, there needs to be some self-denial. There needs to be something that we would uh, give up. The, the ministry uh, in Mingoro is going to be... Uh, challenging one if you pray for us uh, specifically we're looking for a piece of land right now um, we're trying to get right next to where the indigenous people groups are where we can have our home uh, right next to the, the city there um, I think if you play that noise sometimes in the mountains you'll hear this that's the sound that's the sound on the island we got that there and uh, you'll hear the indigenous peoples calling you'll hear that noise and we know that it's going to be a long ministry there. And we want to make disciples. And to be to make disciples, you have to be a disciple. So my challenge for you uh, this evening, church, what kind of followers of Jesus are we? Uh, this, you're the faithful group. You're here. Let's stay faithful. 
uh, don't give up. It's so encouraging as missionaries when we come back and see familiar faces. Thank you so much, church. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for praying for our family. We saw our, our prayer letter downstairs. That's encouraging to us. You have a huge part in, in what we do there in the Philippines. And uh, we're praying for you folks here as well. Um, let's pray, and then, uh, Pastor, you come. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that we would be faithful followers, or we wouldn't uh, be fleeting followers, those that followed you for a little bit, but then they left. Thank you for the, the faithfulness of this good church. Lord, please bless Pastor Hitler and all that he does here. Uh, Lord, help us to continue into the future. Help us not to, um, uh, to faint, Lord, but to stay faithful to you uh, until you come again. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Any man will come after me. Let him deny himself. Now, the way Matthew says it, and take up his cross and follow me. That is entry level to discipleship. But the way Luke says it, it is a continual discipleship. Take up his cross daily and follow me. The choice of self-denial and taking up your cross. Now, taking up your cross is not a burden. That is the instrument of death. That's an instrument of death. Jesus did not take up your burden to bring it to God. God. He carried an instrument of death to God. God. When you take up your cross, it's I die daily. I am crucified with Christ. The thing about our Christian life is that if we're going to follow him, we must deny himself. We must die. And then we're able to follow him. If you do not die, you do not follow him. My biggest problem, and I preached on it, you had the son had life. The only way to have a son is to die. I am crucified with Christ. Matter of fact, he tells us in Romans 6, he said, buried with him in the likeness of the day. Raised to walk in newness of life. That whole thing, the picture, the type, the typology of baptism is I was placed in Christ, I'm put in Christ, I'm buried with Him, and raised to walk in newness of life. Now that is the Christian life. How are you going to follow? It takes denial and it takes death. And then it takes determination. Following him is something you must be determined to do. If there's no determination, you know what you want to do. You want to stop, take a break. You don't need to refill with progress. But you stop on the side of the road, take your break. Oh, yeah. Don't get where you're going. You may never get there. If you stop, take a break, somebody's going to sit down beside you. Try to talk you in Ah, you went far enough. Well, that's not the Christian life. It's not my life. It's not your life. We chose. You chose this. So you don't believe that. We're not Calvinists. He's chosen us, yes. But you made a choice to come to Christ, to believe. Belief is a work. We would do the works of God. This is the work of God that you believe. That's what Jesus said. Now, somebody said we're not saved by works, not by works of righteousness we've done, but it takes the work of belief. We must believe. When we believe, that was by choice. I will believe. You know what Thomas said? I will not believe. 
That's what Thomas said. Disbelieving Thomas. Y'all want to call him doubting. I call him disbelieving. He didn't say, I doubt, I'm having a problem believing. He said, I will not believe. Choice. And uh, now we know he was discouraged. He was discouraged Thomas. We know all kinds of things why he was having a hard time with his will to believe. But the truth of the matter is, belief is a choice. There must be a denial. There must be death. And there must be determination. Or we will not follow Christ. Now the question is, are you determined? Are you dead? Are you dead? The same. Are you denying? The same? Lord, I pray you help us. Thank you for the message. Jesus, keep me near.